So now is the time that the bears start to come out in New Jersey. Um, when you when you see this, I think you're going to be surprised by a couple of the facts. I am not a bear expert in any way means, and I can tell you that this information is posted on our website as of this week, and I thought it would be good to show it here. Um, I think you will be surprised by the bear facts that are provided by the New Jersey Division of Fish and Wildlife for New Jersey. And what this presentation has, just to set it up, is some information for you about bear facts and, and some um, biology and so on. And then what's going on in New Jersey in the program for bees and bears and how to set up your apiary and protect them. So the first thing we'll start with is black bears are in New Jersey. If you look at this, they're in all 21 counties. It's, it's interesting, and I'll get ahead of myself on occasion here, but the majority of them are up in the northwest quadrant. And if you look at this, New Jersey has more bears per square mile than any place in the United States. So what I'll do when I look at this is I'll, I'll call out some of the things that I thought were surprising and I didn't know. How many have ever seen a black bear in our area? Yeah, I've had one in my backyard when I lived in Ringo's. So. Anybody have bees, I mean bears that knock their bees down? Stan, Stan indicated that he had some. My house, too. Yeah. You're, you're in that zone, right, if you see it. So what they His say bees is, were at my house and they got knocked down. So it was 3,500 north of Interstate 80, you know where that line is, and west of 287. But they're in every county in the in the New Jersey region. Charlie? I'm in Bridgewater, and I had one walk right up behind me. And you had one in your backyard in Ringo's. I had one in Ringo's, yeah. So let me tell this story. I used to be a 911 operator here in Hunterdon County. And we would have a map that we set up in the corner of the room every year. And what we do with this map is we take the bear calls and we track the bears for the fish and game officers. People would call, there's a bear on my porch, there's a bear in my backyard. They're, they're not hard to track because people get just ballistic about it. And the common story that you get is they start up in the Delaware Water Gap area or somewhere up in Sussex and, and they migrate down through our area. And they'll follow the Delaware River and they will literally walk down through Trenton if they could. But what typically happens is once they get a little further south of us and get into the Mercer Trenton area, they'll pick the bears up and take them back to where they belong. Back to here. They almost always indicate that the bears, they know the bears because they have a lot of them tagged, and they can tell you which bear is going to come back through next year at what time. You know, it's that kind of thing. They have the relationship. And there's some 900 officers that are in New Jersey that deal with bear problems. And I again, I never really, I guess if you live in Sussex and Warren and you know up in the Newton area, it's just commonplace. Down here, we see a bear, we get excited, right? In, in the Flemington area, at least, I know I do. So anyway, very, very interesting stuff. So they weigh about 400 pounds. They can run three, 35 miles an hour, which means you're not gonna outrun them. I won't read the slide, you can look at them. This is the, the, oops, sorry. This is the interesting thing to me is they can smell up to two miles away. So if they're walking past a field and your hives are there and the predominant wind is going, they'll get that smell. I rode up here with a couple hives in my truck and the smell from the hive is so distinctive and I'm sure in nature that the bears can smell that stuff. So. And they can see and hear well, especially at night, and that's when they're going to be out. So you'll be none the wiser as to what's going on. They're up before sunrise, and they're in again just after sunset is when they're the most active. Um, they're not big on people things, right? They're, they're not going to pester you. I'll get into in a bit how they categorize bears for people, but you know, when you engage them, they'll do a threatening behavior, but most times they will avoid you in New Jersey. So they live in hardwood forests, dense swamps, forested wetlands. We have that habitat in our area, especially along the Delaware River Basin, along that area in Holland Township and where Karen lives in Asbury area. We got Asbury the reservoirs, area. the spruce run and the round Yeah. So Hunterdon Warren, 
completely habitat areas, unlike if you go down to Trenton and you get into Ewing and some of those areas, right? And they are pushing east and they are pushing south of that band of Route 80 and um, 287. So we, we are going to see them. And obviously there's development. Everybody wants to live where everybody isn't, so they're going to where the bears are. And they're going to be here. And everybody believes they have a right to be here. And if you look at the stats, I didn't put them in here, but since 1980, the population of bears, black bears in New Jersey has just been incredible. So I think we have to understand that this is now going to be a way of life for us. So we want to know right now in March what happens with hibernation. And the whole thing that stimulated me to go research this information is I saw an article in NewJersey.com about the bears are coming out of hibernation now. And now is the time that you start to encounter them. So the females, they start their hibernation in October, the males in December. And now, mid to late March is when you typically see them. And you see more escalation of bear encounters in the April time frame as they're out, they're hungry, they're trying to get food, they're trying to get up to their summer weights, and they'll be out and about now. I thought it was interesting, I, I, just to put this in here, is where do they hibernate? You don't think in New Jersey like there's any place, but it seems like the area that they hibernate in is small enough for them to maintain their body heat. So they just find some little niche somewhere, and in they go. I got one in my brush pile. Yeah, you're in Warren, Warren County, yeah. Yeah, they're out there. So this is the state's categorization of bears. And what it indicates is that they have a one, two, and three categorization. One are nasty bears, three are no problem. And you can see the criteria here, but the important thing to see is that if it's a category one, they consider it a threat to public property, they consider it a threat to human life, they will go put that bear down. They try not to do that, right? But they will monitor it. But as soon as it becomes a threat, if it tries to get in a tent at a campsite, if it's trying to get in a house and things like that, no qualms about it, they'll put it down. And constantly what you read in the literature is don't feed the bears, don't leave your garbage out, don't give them opportunities to learn to habitate with humans, even though they're not afraid of us, because that's what moves them from one category to the next. And that includes don't put your beehives out unprotected if you're in bear territory because you're feeding them basically. So here's a 2010-2011 statistic about bear activity report. This is all available up on their website. And you can see that they logged in 2010 eight unprotected hive damage incidents and 14 in 2011. And they've had 10 altogether in the two years for hives that had some sort of electric fence or some sort of barrier protection. Now those are the ones that got reported. I'm gonna guess there's quite a few that probably didn't. So it's happening, right? Here's what you gotta do. I'll let you absorb the slide here. If you think about their habitat, they live in woods, they live along the water. They need water just like everything else. They need forage. So keep your hives out of the way, keep them in the sun, keep them out of cover. These are things that you typically do for good hive maintenance anyway. You don't put them in high grasses or anything like that. But If you have a problem, you're going to have to get an electric fence or build a different barrier. There's advice out there and they will come out and help you. So we went to the seminar. There's a video posted on our YouTube channel. And they talk about you know how to set the fence up, how high, how much power you need how far the strands should be so that the bears, if the strands are far enough, the bear will walk right through it and not see it as a barrier. And the other thing is, you want it visible, but the, the bears will, they'll just back into it with their fur and take the, the jolt to get through to get to the food if they're hungry. And if you bait that strand and they get it on the snout, they will not come back. But you gotta make sure that you keep your fence operational. So you can't set your fence out 
and let the grass grow through it, and the grass takes the charge out of it, and the bear gets it, and they understand, they will come and test and test and test. Ask people who have fences. They will come and test that fence, and they'll just barge through it eventually. So maintain your fence, bait your fences so the bears get a taste and know that it's electricity. And the, the one thing that all the fence providers tell you is if you don't maintain your fence, if you turn it off for a while, you're doing worse than having the fence there at all. What do you bait? What do you bait it? Typically what they do is you bait it with bacon. Sometimes they take um, like granola type material with peanut butter. There's a bunch of different things that you could bait it with and you just put it around they and like they bacon. smell that. They like bacon? They like everybody. They like bacon. <laughs> <laughs> raw bacon. You're not cooking it. You're not making a bacon. But they were vegetarians. Yeah. Yeah. In the video that we that we shot last year on this up in Somerset, they took raw bacon and they just wrapped strips around it. Offensive. What was the web? You said on um, YouTube or what? our YouTube site is um, youtube.com slash n w n j b a. I I could get that to you. Okay. It's on the website. It's on our website too. Is the link to it. Okay. So if you want some guidance, they'll actually come out and work with you. They want to protect the bears as much as you want to protect your hives. So you can call the division's wildlife control unit. There's a phone number up here, and this information also is on the on the website too, by the way. Um, and they'll come out and actually help you set up your fence. What I thought was interesting when we went through the fence demonstration is that if you had like a small solar unit and you put it on your fence, you could ring acres of your property with that thing. Most people envision I would just set it up around a garden or around, but I know someone that has um, hogs that they raise, and they have this thing set up around their whole pastures, and they put their bees in there in a separate area, and, and these things are powerful enough to drive that fence for quite a distance. So last but not least, <laughs> if you encounter a bear, I say this tongue in cheek, but you know we all have our hives out in the woods or wherever they are, right? Don't play dead. Not a good idea. Actually fight the bear if it, if it encounters you. And if you're in a confrontation, you be the aggressor and chase the bear away. So I, I would take questions, but I'm not a bear expert. I completely mined this off of the website, but um, I did go to that seminar. I did say in a Holiday Express last night. No. <laughs> so if you, if you have any uh, questions, I'll, I'll take them. But um, this information, not in presentation form, but in full form, is either out on our website or you can follow the link back to the source information about bears on the Division of Fish and Wildlife website. Okay.